turn on. Okay, one second. Come soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, recording is started. Perfect. All right. Okay, so welcome everyone um, to your first ever fourth year semester guidelines. Um, in case you don't know, my name is Pranav. I'm a fifth year student here at Masrik. And my team for this year is Sandra and Shiv. I will give them a chance to introduce themselves. Sandra. Uh, so, hey guys, uh, I'm Sandra and um, I'm the clinical board member and I'm in fifth year. Hey guys, I'm Shiv. I'm in fourth year and I'm a clinical staff member. Awesome. OK, um, so just some general information about this semester. Um, I think you guys are already familiar with this, but whenever you see your grades or whenever you see your semester ahead, you will see different codes, which kind of um, it'll tell you exactly which exams you have and which which of those are going to be credits. So if you have ZK on any of your exams, we're going to go through them all, so don't worry. Um, they're going to be like most likely oral exams and possibly with the practical or written part. If you have a K, it's colloquium. It's just a pass fail. So mostly it's going to be like a, some type of project or essay or some type of like, you know, something very basic. You will you will get those out of the way. Don't worry about that. And and as for the Z courses, it's just basically like attendance and homework and yeah, it's um, pretty self-explanatory. Of course, you can always uh, ask us if you have any questions down the line. OK, um, overview. Um, so personally for me, I think uh, fourth year is probably the, it's probably the, I wouldn't say the easiest, but it's, it's one of the lightest years you're going to have in med school. Um, what do I mean when I say that? Like the main subject that you that you might have trouble with is going to be pharmacology because now you're going to transition from preclinical subjects into your clinical subjects um, and you're going to go well obviously COVID has kind of changed things around a little bit but you're going to go through your different blocks like ophthalm, ENT, medical psych but um, personally I think uh, if you have farm on lock uh, and you have a set schedule we, which we're going to Go with our break on a little bit. I think you guys have um, a good a good hold of uh, your both here. Personally, I think um, there's nothing really to worry about, but just the only advice I can give from a general consensus is just you know if you have classes in person, then always try to keep a notebook in hand. Where let's say you meet a patient who has um, I don't know glaucoma, for example. Um, and you might not be familiar with glaucoma. You might, you know, you might have some questions or you might want to, you know, learn about the data. Just keep a little notebook in hand. I found this really useful and note down the disease or whatever you want to refer to later. And by the time you reach home or within the same day, try to revise that same like pathology. And at least the next time when you go for your class, you'll have a better idea on your blog. Um, aside from that, I, I, there's not really anything else. Maybe Sandra, uh, if there's anything you want to add? Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's, um, it is the lightest year of med school. And I was, I also want to mention one thing, because most of these doctors, they don't take attendance. Instead of that, they will give you like a sheet of paper where you have to like collect uh, signatures and stuff. So make sure you you keep that because at the end of the end of, you have to give it back to the secretary and that's when you uh, get the credit. So just make sure you have that. Other than that, I think fourth year was a uh, good. Ex yeah, like pharmacology is um, the main exam or one of the main exam, which will be the hardest one. 
Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's actually it, it's actually fine. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Uh, Shiv, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I, was, I just want to say that the most, I think the most crucial part, part of fourth year is like organ, organizing your blocks in such a way that in your second semester, like the hardest subject you should have is only farm. So, for example, I think you should get the more hefty blocks such as derm and like maybe diagnostics done in like the first semester. So in the second semester, you, have, you don't really have to worry about the bigger exams apart from farm. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good point. Um, a lot of people cut their blocks around so they they have a longer vacation or they get their smaller exams out of the way. You can do that, although it's obviously the second semester and we're well into like third or fourth week now, so it might be a bit uh, late to do that. But if you have the opportunity to do your exams early, then definitely we would recommend that because pharmacology is going to take quite a bit of your time. Um, so yeah. I think, I think that's that. Um, as for the prerequisites, um, well, I think uh, this is this is kind of like a little gray area because in most years we have prerequisites like anatomy, physiology that you have to pass in order to get into the next step. Um, in this case, the main subject that you have to pass again is pharmacology. It's not to say that you shouldn't pass your other subjects like your blocks and stuff. I'm, I'm sure everyone will. But in the case that let's say you don't pass up down, you might not be able to have just one subject. It's not like your entrance into the next year is blocked entirely or you might have to repeat a year or something, but it's just going to you would have to rearrange your blocks in a way where you do it after you've done the exam that was pending. Um, but yeah, I, you can always check out this, uh, the prerequisites and stuff later. We'll leave the link for the presentation. So yeah. OK, pharmacology, um, I'll I'll give it to Sandra now. Uh, uh, OK, so pharmacology. So that's going to be your final exam for this semester. So in order to obtain the credit for the practical you guys know that you have to you need the attendance and you need to pass three mcq tests and the prescription test so after you have obtained the credits you can then do the exam uh unfortunately um we don't know yet uh, how your exam is going to be if it's going to be a uh, written and oral exam or if it's going to be like an mcq exam um but um someone is waiting a bit. um but other than that when you're preparing for um pharmacology exam you need to follow the exam questions um and i would highly recommend using interactive syllabus um so I don't know if you guys know where to find the interactive syllabus, but basically if you go to pharmacology practice, uh, you can find the interactive syllabus. So that basically will, get, it's basically like a guide uh, for what to say for each exam questions. Uh, because some people, um, some people wonder like, oh, do I need to know all the drug names? Do I need to know everything? Uh, some of these questions can be a bit vague, so that's why the interactive syllabus is a perfect guide. Um, so I would highly recommend using that for your exam preparation. Um, so books and materials. Uh, our uni recommends Rangdale's. Um, Rangdale's. Um, you can also use Lippincott's, and there's also like other uh, nice documents on MIMSA study hubs like uh, Agatha's document or Andrew's document. Uh, also use lectures. Uh, the lectures is mainly based from Rangdale's book. So I would recommend using lectures. Um, for study tips, um, 
pharmacology is all about memorizing, memorizing the drug names, uh, the mechanism of action, indication, side effects, contraindication. So repetition is key. Uh, the more you repeat um, the content, the better it is for you. Uh, so I would highly recommend revise with someone, revise with a friend so you guys can test each other and in that way, you also repeat uh, the drugs as well. Um, I would also recommend using sketchy videos. I found it really helpful for me. I don't know how it was for Prana, uh, but I found it really helpful. Uh, if you guys like sketchy micro, I'm sure you guys will like sketchy videos. Um, and also like making flashcards or like tables of um, like basically using um, the information about drugs like mechanism of action, indication, contraindication, side, effect, side effects. Um, and yeah, basically using that for revision, that will help a lot. Um, and yeah, also like be prepared for each lesson so whatever the teacher is talking about will make more sense um, and yeah that's what I have to say about pharmacology. Um, Pranav do you have anything else you want to add? Um, yeah so for us um, we uh, had the exam we were the first batch that had the exams just like an online robot. Um, not, now, this is kind of tricky because a lot of people thought that that meant, okay, you know what, you can take a little easy and you can take a step back and, and you can prepare a little less because you can figure out the drug names and you, you know you're not like explaining it to someone. However, um, from my personal experience, I think it's you should, uh, first of all, you need to figure out your learning strategy because everyone learns differently. Like I, for example, like I made a little, uh, maybe a 60 page handbook where I try to summarize all the drugs, like let's say ANS um, or like sympathomimetics, sympatholytics, cholinolytics, all of them in like a single page. And what I did was before, or at, at least as much as I could, I tried to revise that book as much as I could. So that kind of just helped with like the repetitions, which, brings me to the next point. Um, you have to space out your repetition. So it's when well, it's March. So you kind of have to have like a little study time to perform where you realize like, OK, you know what? This week I'm going to do ANS or this week I'm going to do opioids. And you need to try to like focus and like learn as much as you can so that when it's exam time, you're already prepared. You're not like mugging everything up all at once. For in terms of resources, um, I would say Andre's lecture notes were for me. I think they were brilliant. Um, I if they're not on the Mensa Hub, I'm going to upload them right after. So I think Andre's lecture notes I highly recommend because it's uh, it's like a 250 page document which has like a summary of all the lectures, and and I just enjoyed reading it through that way rather than going through the actual lectures. I don't know, but that, that's just probably personal preference. Um, I also use Lippincott's. I I think that had like just a little bit extra explanation that you know you need, uh, as well as Kaplan lecture notes. If you guys have time, definitely check out the Kaplan videos. Um, I think he's explained it really well. Um, there won't be any gaps in your knowledge if you've covered the lecture, a good textbook, and if you have your own notes. Um, one one mistake I did make though early on was I passively kind of taking notes and I felt like I felt like I was learning, but I, I really wasn't. But um, I realized the more I spaced my repetition and the more times I revised it rather than just, you know, looking at the book and just writing it, it, it doesn't help you learn the drug names. Like you just have to keep talking about it, like Sandra said, explain it to a friend. Sketchy like is a good resource as well. I personally didn't use it, but I know a lot of people did and they got really good results. Um, and yeah, if you have a study body for farm, I think that'll, that's a good uh, a good thing to have because this is probably the, I don't want to say the last exam you need to clear before you become a doctor, but 
from from my peers the they said that this is like your last barrier before you finally make a step to become a doctor so i i'd say stake farm it really seriously and i think that the rest of the semester is going to be fine Um, ah, and one more thing, the uh, the examination, if you guys have it as a an, uh, what is it called? a robot, then there's a specific uh, grading system. So there's going to be 50 MCQ questions and you need to pass 30. And each correct answer gives you four points. So that means if you pass, you'll get 120. However, the actual pass mark is 180, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 181 to 214 is will give you a grade E. Now, the other 60, 60 uh, points you're going to get from your like partial test throughout the semester. So also, if you if you haven't already, do try to keep up with your partial tests. Try to like stay in, in par with class. Um, I think it'll not only benefit your final grade, but um, it'll just help you stay on track and just understand what's happening in class. Um, and yeah, I think uh, if there is something shift, do you want to add something on this? Um, I'm, I'm still studying for farm, so I'm in the same boat as most other four years. So yeah. Right, right, right. Um, well, I, I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be fine. If you know who to, who to talk to if you need any help. <laughs> OK. Um, next is Durham. Durham, uh, Sandra, do you want to start off with Durham? Um, yeah, uh, so basically for Durham, uh, so the practical credit is, uh, based on your attendance. So you, you, you can't, um, use any absence. You have to, uh, attend for all these classes. And I also remember, uh, but now you guys have online classes. So I guess you guys don't need to be present in classes. Um, but, um, okay, so for the exam, uh, so basically you will have an oral, oral exam. So you have to pick, so you basically pick three questions. So one from general and second one from special, third one from venerology. And uh, after you're done with your or, oral exam, uh, you have a case history. So from what I understood is that um, the examiner will give you a patient, uh, patient, patient history, and you have to uh, you have to tell them what skin uh, condition is. Um, so for this exam, I used um, IRIC's document, uh, especially for the general part, and Maria's document for the special part, and Venerology document, which is... Uh, so all of these documents you can find on MIMSA Study Hub. Um, some people use the book um, Hunter's Clinical Dermatology. I didn't use it, um, but yeah, I mostly use uh, the documents that was written by other students. Um, also, uh, I also use this Dermnet, uh, which is a website, uh, and this one is really good because it basically explains like the, the skin conditions, very short and sweet. And there's also pictures of these skin conditions um, because like these, um, because Derm is very new, like <clears throat> you haven't uh, learned anything, like most of this from like first year to third year. So this is very new content. Um, so I would highly recommend looking at pictures so you kind of have an idea how it looks like. Um, and also, like, it is a lot of memor memorization, so you should repeat and also revise. Uh, for me, I revised with a friend of mine uh, because, like I said, it is a lot to memorize. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend re revising with a friend. Uh but other than that, uh, yeah, and 
I didn't use osmosis, but osmosis is always a good source for every subject. Um, so, yeah, Prano, do you, or Shiv, do you guys want to add anything? Um, um, I, I from my side, I, sorry, Shiv, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I personally had the exam in January, so it was kind of weird because, like, um, people who had the exam in January um, had the exam online. However, people who had the exam in February had it in person. However, um, from what I've heard, like, the, ex the actual exam isn't too bad. Like, they only want the basics. So I found that um, osmosis and the document was was enough and like I found the textbook had way too much information than than was needed to at least get a decent grade. So I personally think like two to three weeks is enough for Suzanne. So I think Prana's frozen. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, sure. uh, oral or online. But um, yeah, I, I think Sandra mentioned everything already. Um, Prana, uh, I, we can't hear you. You you can't hear me. No, I think you were saying something, but you kind of got cut up. Ah, sorry. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. Okay, okay. Um, no, I was I was just saying like a lot of the stuff is very new to you, so give yourself like some time to like familiarize yourself with these terms. Um, I would say an ideal space would be like two to three weeks. I I normally suggest that to everyone who who asks me. Um, longer if, if you if you feel like you want to learn about it more then go for it. But I, I don't think it needs more than three weeks max. Uh, in terms of resources, IREX document 100%. Um, it's on the MEMSA hub. Check it out. Um, Andre's document. Uh, in case it's not on the hub, I'll upload it soon. Um, and osmosis, personally, I think uh, it's it's a really good resource because, uh, as uh, Sandra mentioned, like you need to picture these diseases. You can't just um, learn the definition and just you know blot it out. So try your best to like have a mental picture of the disease, and that'll help you like talk about it and discuss it in the exam. Um, yeah, I think that's about it really. But this is probably, I, I would just add that this is the, in my opinion, one of the hardest block exams. So do pay attention to Durham, definitely. Um, I also want to add one thing uh, for Durham. Um, so uh, basically, okay, so you're going to pick three questions, right? But all of these examiners, they love psoriasis, atopic eczema, the tumors like squamous cell, basal cell carcinoma, T cell lymphoma, they they really like those topics. So even though your questions is not related to any of that, they will just randomly ask you like uh, psoriasis. So what is the treatment, you know? So make sure, um, I think in your classes, like they even, I remember um, when I had Derm, they mentioned like psoriasis, atopic eczema and the tumors like was like most important topics that you need to know. Um, so make sure you know that uh, because I, like especially psoriasis, they, they love it <laughs> for some reason. 
Def definitely, yeah, that, that's actually a very good point. Psoriasis um, is a favorite topic of uh, Professor Pashku. Um, I think, I'm not sure the other examiners are, but yeah, psoriasis and all these tumors. Venerology is also a section you should take care of. Um, yeah, it's pretty... I, I, I just want to add, Pranav, um, Vashki is no longer Sorry. examining. Yeah. Um, is, is Hannah yet left ah. over, I think? Oh. So, so she's oh, okay. the main okay. examiner now. Perfect. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and your experience with her with her was was okay, yeah. Yeah, that like she's Serena's examiner, and like, like I think what she wants, like she focuses more on like the treatments and like the drugs needed, stuff like that. Um, that's basically it. To be honest. Great, great. Yeah, um, I think uh, I remember there was uh, some questions that were asked about like the uh, specific types of treatment, like the emollients, the solutions, and all that. So try to like don't neglect that. I I personally did, so don't make that mistake. Um, I think that's okay for Durham. Is there anything else we need to add? I think we're fine. Cool. All right, ophthalm. Uh, Sandra? Um, so ophthalmology, uh, again, um, this one is uh, based on attendance. Um, uh, the thing is that for us, like for me and Prana, we had ophthalmology uh, last year when the lockdown started so basically for us it was only attendance but I think you guys have attendance and a little credit test I'm not sure um, but yeah after you have obtained that credit you have an oral um, exam did you want to say anything Prana? Okay, um, so yeah, you will have oral exam. Um, so yeah, you will, uh, you have to pick three questions. Uh, so one from anatomy and physiology and a second one from um, anything about tumors or diseases of the eye. And the third one is basically about systemic diseases like how it influences the eye the vision um for this one i use henrik's document uh and the lectures i found the lectures really helpful um and uh, for study tips i would recommend like watching oski videos uh for like how to do examination uh, of the eye, like how to examine the visual equity, um, accommodation, uh, color testing, you know, stuff like that. It's uh, also helpful for ophthalmology exam itself, but also like for your future. So I would recommend, um, um, yeah, using like os like um, watching OSCE videos. And I found Geeky Medics really good for OSCE videos in general. So I would recommend using that. Um, also, this one, Tim wrote. I think Pranav used this. I didn't use it. Um, do you want to add anything for that, Pranav? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, I don't know, I yeah, keep disconnecting. Um, OK, OK. Um, no, I uh, basically, like, uh, for Optown, I I really enjoyed Optime. I think that we didn't really have any classes for it, but uh, the best way I learned from it, I mean, I learned about it was through timroot.com. Uh, he has like very concise and like brief explanations on all the diseases, like your glaucomas, your like different variants of it and all that stuff. So definitely check timroot.com out. Um, you obviously have Henrik's document. I think Sandra's already mentioned it. Um, the OSCE videos um, throughout like for any any of your blocks where you feel like you need like a little revision on certain examination techniques, OSCE videos are are your go-to. Um, and yeah, I think 
I don't think there's much more because I didn't really use the lectures personally. Um, I gave myself about two weeks or even less actually, and and I think it was it was okay. Even though of course we didn't have an oral exam, but um, I would say two weeks should be should be sufficient for for optimal. Right, um, ENT, Sandra. Um, so ENT, um, again, um, so it's attendance. You can't use uh, any absence here. Uh, you have to be present in every class. Um, and uh, for the exam, you will first have a practical part. So here the examiner will ask you like how to examine the nose, throat, ear, and after you have passed that, uh, you go to the oral exam. Um, and uh, for this exam, I used uh, Henrik's document. Um, Henrik's document was uh, short and uh, very understandable, so I really liked his document. Uh, I also use uh, lectures for few topics. Not, I didn't use that much, but I would recommend using lectures because that's what the examiners expect you to know. Um, also for this one, um, yeah, like I would recommend using OSCE, like uh, looking for OSCE videos, uh, Geeky Medics. Um, there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos about how to examine, uh, how to do examination for ENT. Uh, so I would highly recommend using that. Also, like this will be beneficial for your future as well, not only for ENT exam. Um, and yeah, uh, I didn't amboss, um, but uh, I think, uh, did you use it, Prana? Yeah, I I use Amboss a little bit, but um, you're, you're definitely right. The Henrik document again is the way to go. And I think you guys, you guys might be noticing a pattern like we, we are mentioning a lot of documents rather than textbooks because we feel they're a lot more efficient uh, and they're a lot more time saving as well. Like you don't want to be like staying indoors and like studying all the time. We obviously want you guys to pass your exams, but we also want you to be efficient. So uh, Henrik has made a lot of documents that we've already mentioned, and um, I think ENT, I used his as well, and I think it was pretty sufficient. Uh, as for the practice, like I would just say, uh, try to uh, just try to make sure that you're prepared for the practical exam as well, because I wasn't really personally aware that there was a practical exam until the day of my exam. so. It, it was a little challenging, but just uh, just be uh, just be careful because uh, you're not going to be like taught practically on a lot of different things now, obviously. So yeah, just keep that in mind. That's, that's all that I'll say. I think Hirako is. Um, I think I just want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was saying, uh, I think Hiroko, Hiroko, do you want to ask any question? It's not a question. I would like to make a comment about this course. Yeah. Um, they changed the questions uh, sometime in February and students were actually attending the exam without the updated questions list. Uh, so I'm familiar with Henrik's document, but I just wanted to mention that it's technically outdated because there are several new questions that were added. Um, which were not covered in the lecture. Maybe they'll improve the lecture this semester, but um, there are several questions that will not be covered in Henrik's document. So it's good for the basic questions that are that stay the same, but there are several new questions as well, um, which also are, uh, I'm not really sure of which resources. I'm not familiar with the ones that you guys mentioned, like Amboss, but uh, personally, I did not find uh, very much material in the recommended textbook either for some of the questions, the new questions. All right, perfect. Yeah, um, they're yeah they're they're all they always change like questions and stuff. Um, but if there's any anything you guys want to ask us like regarding the document and, or if it's not updated, just let us know and we'll we'll try to get back to you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, all right, then we move to diagnostics. Uh, Sandra, take it away. Uh, yeah, for diagnostics. So here, um, yeah, you have the attendance. Uh, and also at the end of the block, you will have an online test of radiological anatomy. Um, so after you have obtained that credit, you can do the exam. And uh, here we only have oral exams. So there is no practical part, nothing. It's just an oral exam. So where you uh, have to pick three questions. So one from special, uh, second one from radiology, and uh, third one from nuclear. Um, and uh, for this one, I use Brady and Co document. Um, I haven't used any of the other ones, uh, but does Shiv want to add anything? Um, personally, I also use the Breeding Code document. Um, I had this uh, block online, and I'm uh, sorry, it was in person actually. So um, there's a morning practical class, and after that, you have like a two hour lecture. Um, to be honest, I actually enjoyed uh, that practical class and I found it really interesting. Um, the credit test is, so the anatomy test is based on x-rays found on the IS, I think. And the, the credit test, the second part of the credit test is just based on the basic uh, stuff you learn during seminars. Um, and yeah, that's it. Awesome, awesome. Um, I think there is also a, a summary document that uh, from Maria. Uh, it's about 70 pages and it covers more or less all the bare bones basics. So do check that out if you're running short of time. Um, and yeah, I think I think uh, the rest is pretty pretty much expanded. It's a, it's an enjoyable block. I, I agree with you. It's um it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, I want right. to also Is there add, anything else you guys want to add? To yeah, I want to add one more thing. Um, for uh, so I use basically YouTube for radiology and nuclear, like especially for the first, I think ten questions, uh, because it was a lot about like these imaging methods, like these physics and stuff. So I found YouTube very helpful. Um, yeah, so I would recommend using YouTube for that, just for a common understanding, like just to have an idea about what what is going on. Uh, and uh, I can see that Hiroko is raising her hand. Um, do you have any question or do you want to add anything? No, I'm sorry, I just forgot to put it down. Oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I think we can move on. Perfect. Um, all right, the next stop is stomatology, probably one of the more, um, uh, well, I don't know how to put it, but one of the subjects that you're not really, it's not high yield, I'll, I'll say that personally. Um, you have a lot of documents you can use that are already made and they explain everything in about 120 pages. Uh, Louis Senke's document is is there. It's uh, it's pretty elaborate. I did refer to the Stomatology for Students textbook, um, but not for like every single like pathology. I just use it as a reference. Um, there's also uh, on YouTube there was Mental Dental. That's a really good channel. You can check that out. Uh, and of course, your dentistry colleagues are probably your best uh, is your best bet if you have any doubts. Um, I think uh, if you have someone who can explain things to you, then brilliant because uh, stomatology were, it's one of those things you're not going to encounter a lot over your course. So yes, uh, Sandra, is there anything you want to add? Um, yeah, like Pranav said, I would uh, highly recommend asking dentistry students. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, I used also Louis Enke's document. But you know, like some of these questions is like about these procedures and you want to have a common understanding about 
dentistry, you know. So I asked one of my friends and uh, it was very, very helpful. Um, so I would recommend asking dentistry students uh, for some help. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I agree. Um, Shiv, I think you're still doing stomatology or you have it this semester? Yeah, I have my exam next week, so I'm studying for it now. Good luck. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Good luck, good luck. Um, okay, medical psych, uh, Shiv, uh, I think uh, I'll leave this to you. Yeah, um, so psych medical psychology, it's a two-week block. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's completely taught online at the moment. I'm not sure how it was last year, but I'm pretty sure it was in person. Um, the final exam is just the credit test. Uh, and it's just an online robot, and um, the questions are asked um, from a book, which is, and you're you're given roughly about ten chapters to read, um, and this book can be borrowed from the psychology um, building, and um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward exam. There's not much to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, for us. We, we didn't really, well, we just had like an, I had an essay of, I think it was about 1,500 words that I had to submit. Um, I don't know about Sandra, was it the same for you? Uh, for me, um, it was only like a oral exam and I wouldn't even call it as an exam because basically she just asked me what topic I liked and uh, why I liked it. So. I'm very surprised to hear that they have a robot for this course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the robot has like 40 questions and <laughs> roughly about 32 to pass. So it's not as bad as it seems. So oh, I wow. don't worry about it too much. Yeah. That's a high pass mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I would actually recommend the psychology for medicine textbook. Um, I, I have read through it a little bit and I found it pretty interesting. Um, do check it out. I, I think uh, I think it's a really good reference source. Um, but generally, and we are what? Wait, I want to just. Oh, sorry. Add. Yeah. So generally, I just feel like yeah. this medical psychology is very interesting. Um, it is very interesting block because like it's not only um, it, it is very interactive. You at least for. Us, it was. I don't know how it is um, as an online class, um, but at least for us, it was like very interactive. We got to do a lot of stuff, like basically act like a patient and act like a doctor to see how it is. And um, yeah, so it, it is a very nice block. Um, nice, nice. Um, all right, I think that is enough of that. Then we go to medical ethics. Um, okay, for medical ethics, it's um, it's one of those courses where you're just gonna have like conversations with the doctor and, or sorry, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if he's a doctor, but anyways, um, you're gonna have like just general discussions with your classmates and on like a lot of topics, like for example, abortion or like, in vitro fertilization or whatever it might be. Um, active participation, like do try to get involved, do try to put out your opinions and, you know, just say whatever's on your mind. Don't like hold back because this is the one class where you can just, you know, just let loose, just say whatever you want. Um, I would also say that um, medical ethics for dummies, I personally had a read through it because I had to write a paper for uh, for the subject, um, do uh, have a look at it. I think it's a really nice book. There's no real examination or anything aside from the attendance, and there is a case study. I think uh, Shiv, if you want to mention something about that. Yeah. So as our class was online, um, we had to do a case study in pairs, whereby we had to present um, a patient. For example, our patient. Uh, was, was was based on something about euthanasia. So we just had to like say the basic facts around the patient and like 
the pros and cons of euthanasia, et cetera. But I'd also like to add what Prana said about um, class um, interaction. Um, as, it's, as the course is online, it's kind of hard to make the class interesting. So I would strongly, um, I strongly recommend that you at least try to say something in class. Otherwise, you'll just feel like you're not really getting anything back from it. And it'll just feel really slow. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Sandra, is there anything you want to add? I think you guys mentioned everything. Yeah, like active participation, because it is a very interesting block. Like you can get to discuss about, um, yeah, different topics. And yeah, you can see a lot of opinions, different opinions from your colleagues. Um, so yeah, I found it really interesting. 100%, 100%, do actively participate. That's the take home message. Um, forensic medicine. Uh, Shiv, I'll leave this to you. Um, so, so again, like we had this class, class online. Usually, I'm pretty sure you have a practical part and um, a lecture after. However, we didn't have a lecture or anything like that. We just had a rope up, which you just had to complete. Um, and yes, the report consisted of uh, multiple choice questions and uh, a mini case study part where you just have to um, just briefly answer just the basic points which are found in the lectures. And yeah, it wasn't really much to it, which is unfortunate because it seemed like a really interesting course to actually go and see like people cut bodies and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it was a really interesting block, I have to say, like um, the things that you see in forensics, you're probably not going to see a lot more often down the line. So if you do have uh, the classes and stuff like pay as much attention as you can. It's uh, it's quite interesting and a bit gory, I, I have to add, because we saw a few autopsies and it was quite grim. Uh, they have a little textbook. It's about, I think, 30 pages or something. So. If you have that, uh, the, the test that Shiv mentioned, I think if you just whisk through that book in like about a few days, then you, you should be fine. They do have that, um, there's a museum at the top of the, on the top floor of the forensic department. So like I said, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, different right now because of COVID, but uh, if you have the opportunity to check it out, definitely I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it. Um, Sandra, is there anything you want to add? Um, no, I think you guys added pretty much everything for this one. Cool. Awesome, awesome. That leaves us to genetics. Uh, Sandra, take it away. Um, okay, so yeah, attendance. I guess this is also online for you guys. Uh, and then you will have... Um, MCQ test um, and I think you guys will have to also do a presentation about a genetic disease uh, if I'm not sure uh, but for this subject I'm gonna be honest like I didn't even um, like like you, you, there's nothing to study from like there is no books you, you can study from you know yeah. I mean, if you're really interested, you can use the lectures, but it, yeah, I mean, I would say don't waste your time on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if you have like a disease that you want to go through, just uh, plug it in on Amboss or YouTube and, you know, just take it from there. Don't uh, don't spend too much time like uh, uh, worrying about this. Um, I think that uh, Shiv, I think you're still doing genetics, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I did it last week. Um, yes, yeah, as Sandra said, oh, it's oh, pretty okay. straightforward. I wouldn't really waste too much time, like she said, on this one. Perfect, perfect. Um, okay, that leads us to our last subject then, which is Czech. Um, so I'm currently doing Czech 8, so I can definitely say it's not ideal that we have our classes uh, online. Um, but at the 
same like you know check is quite important because uh, whenever you go to your hospitals and you know you go to your rotations you have to kind of communicate with patients it's something that quite a lot of us take for granted but um, to be very honest with you it's the only way you can learn like or gather information from a patient um, one suggestion is uh, using quizlet like let's say if you have um, let's say if you have a pediatrics block um, go over the chapter for pediatrics like the day before so that if you do have the class and when you do have the class you kind of already have an idea of what questions you would ask the pediatric patient you're not like completely lost like obviously go over your examination techniques and stuff like supplement that with your check and and you should be good um but in terms of the the criteria for the for the course there is as far as i'm as far as i'm aware there's two tests there's a written test which is worth four percent and an oral which is worth four percent um and oh, of course your homeworks uh, are worth two percent as well um so try to keep up with your homeworks like if not the same day then like within the week i think you have a deadline of uh yeah before your next class starts you should have the homework of the last week submitted then you will be eligible for the two percent um so do try to keep in touch with your homework because it's it's just going to help you long term um i think uh, talking medicine again is your main resource uh quizlet of course um and yeah like I think we have like a proper oral exam with the whole book this time uh, or like we're going to we could be asked about anything. I'm not sure about the structure. And yeah, really, that's not uh, there's not much more I can say. Sandra, you finished check already. So if you want to add something, go for it. Um, check. Um, I OK, so I'm just going to say like just what I did for credit test. Um, so I went through the raw pots. I found the raw pots and the handouts uh, from IS very helpful because some of these uh, like these questions or these uh, these questions from raw pots and IS handouts can be a little bit similar to what you can see on the credit test. So I would recommend you guys to do the raw pots several times uh, as a repetition. Um, but other than that, yeah, like uh, like Pranav said, Quizlet, uh, because you have to memorize these words. Um, and uh, yeah, like, th yeah, that's the thing, like there is a lot of walk caps. So uh, maybe try to do a little bit of check every week um, just to because you don't want to end up having to do use like three days for to memorize all of it, you know. Uh, so I would recommend like doing a little bit of check uh, every week just just so you are not like completely lost. Um, and yeah, I think that's what I have to say about check. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, one thing I will uh, suggest is that in case you guys are struggling with like the declensions, like uh, the singular and the plurals, like for example, I can't remember the differences between like the U endings and the OV endings and stuff. What I found helpful for, helpful for me was just having like a little declension table. I can show you it's kind of like this. So what how I it, it's already there like in the in the book, but Try making your own version so you will learn at least the the first the first declension type and the second type. Like there's there's like the regular, the irregulars. Um, the more you know, the better. But take it as uh, take it as uh, that table that you had in Latin that you just had to know. Um, and ever since I I learned this table, I think it just helped me like, you know, answer those questions like quite easily. As for the talking medicine part, yeah, like like Alexander said, like Quizlet and just constant provision as much as you can. Um, uh, Shiv, is there anything you want to add for Jack? Um, uh... No, all right, perfect, perfect. 
And that's it, guys. Uh, are there any questions for us? Uh, nope. All right, uh, Sandra, could you drop the feedback form in the in the chat so yeah. that at least who's here can just answer it up real quick? Awesome. We just made a brief little feedback form and um, if you guys have like a minute or so just uh, you don't have to drop your names but just leave us a little uh, opinion or like a little rating and we'll we'll understand how to go about our next lectures we'll take your advice into, into consideration Is it yeah i just um, I sent it on the awesome 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 Okay, uh, Sandra, I think you can turn the recording off. We should be okay there.